Hello, this is Hawker Bean, and today we are going to be starting with the Cleric's Path. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Kigare, Bounty Buki. A cool spring wind swept through the, the forested mountain as Kaito Iguchi climbed the narrow dirt path through the trees. He leaned on his staff, an eight-ringed shakujo given to him by his father, who was gifted it by his father before him. Kaito came from a multi-generational lineage of Buddhist monks, but unlike others in his calling, he had no temple to call home. His temple was the open sky. Kaito rubbed his bare scalp, looking up further along the mountain trail. He was in his forties, but his active lifestyle I will kept him lean and wiry. His robes were mostly traditional, but he discarded the long billowing sleeves so the cool mountain air kissed his bare arms. A wandering monk, Kaito begged alms from locals and community as he passed through, often staying in homes for a night or two before moving on again. His work took him from one end of Japan to the other. Sometimes, more than once in the space of a year, more often than not, his duties took him out of to out of the way places such as this. Hiking a dirt trail up the side of Mount Ibuki in Shiga Prefecture, Kansai region. Kaito looked up at the sky and estimated it was several hours past midday, so he leaned his Akujo against a nearby tree. He untied the cloth knapsack from his back and opened it, retrieving a few onigiri wrapped in seaweed and filled with smoked fish. He ate his meal, gazing out over the edge of a cliff overlooking Lake Biwa in the afternoon sun. A sudden shift in the wind brought with it a smell of rotting leaves and wet earth. His meal finished, he took up the Sarakujo and continued his way up the mountain path. With each step he took, the eight silver rings atop the Sarakujo climbed lending a simple tempo to his progress. After another hour, he stood at the base, base of a steep stone staircase framed by a large stone torii gate, stained by water and lichen. He stepped over the threshold and started to climb the leaf-blanketed stairs. The trees grew closer together as he climbed, shading the stones and simulating a later hour. At the top of the stairs, a shattered wooden gate hung open, rotting from moisture, but also having been recently struck with incredible force. Kaito gripped his shakujo as he approached the open gate, but before he reached it, two brilliant orange lights played past him. He jumped back, almost losing his footing on the leaves. Kaito's gaze followed the lights as the two Hitodama spirits flitted between the trees in their retreat. The little balls of flame fled from recently dead and were said to be souls escaping the body. As he turned back towards the gate, Kyle began chanting the Amitabha Sutra in an effort to guide the two souls to the Pure Lands. Beyond the broken gate was a small courtyard paved with stones, surrounded by the remains of a dilapidated traditional wooden fence. The stones of the courtyard were tightly fit together and layered with dead leaves. At the far end of the courtyard, three dilapidated temple buildings lay abandoned. What's a shrine to the to mount Ibuki's resident colony. Time and the elements had clearly taken their toll on these structures, but despite the environment, the temple still stood in the crisp mountain air. The temple was laid out in a horseshoe formation, facing away from him. Creating an inner courtyard, Kaito continued to cruise across the stones until he stood before the shattered sliding door to the central temple building. Entering the decrepit structure, he found Lee, he was in little else. The floors were free from furniture or the usual temple accoutrements. He could hear strange, garbled sounds over the direction of the inner courtyard as he climbed up the a withered wooden staircase in the back of the temple. He found a panel on the upper floor that would allow access to a tiled roof for repairs. And exited into the summer sunshine. There was a mist hanging over the courtyard trailing up the mountainside beyond it. Kaito approached the edge of the roof and looked down. Laid out on the paved stones of the shrine were two bodies, a young man and a middle-aged woman. Blood drenched the paved stones, splashed across the corpses with each, each, which had each suffered a terrible, overland trauma to the torso and head. 
Crouching over the bodies was a large figure with wild knot hair, horns curling up from his forehead, discolored in humanly red skin, and tusks growing from his lips. <sighs> the Oni's face was covered in blood. He held the woman's arm up, his glistening tusks stained red in his open mouth as he prepared to take another bite from her flesh. The creature salt stood tall enough that his head would have brushed against the ceiling of any country house, shoulders so wide that we have that he would have little trouble tackling a water or buffalo. Suddenly, the troll dropped the arm and looked up towards the roof Kaito was standing on. Ah, uh, hello, priest. How pleasant. The Oni wiped his mouth with the back of his fair forearm, wiping it off and turned on the rough tunic and rags he was wearing. Could you come back in an hour? I am trying to enjoy my meal. We are old friends, you and I. Certainly you would offer me such a small request. The Oni's Japanese was rough, with an underlying growl to each syllable. But Kaito understood the yokai well enough. No, stand clear from the dead, Onime. I don't think I will, priest. The Oni reached for a, a long iron bar. Hexagonal in shape, with the rough teeth of metal protruding from its upper half. The club had a handle made of bone and wrapped in refugian leather was half as tall as Kaito. Kaito brought forth two Ofudo paper arms from his belt pouch, attaching one to the tip of his shakujo, with a spoken incantation or todama from Kaito's lips. It wrapped tightly around the shaft between the seal rings. I ask you, stay your hand, Oni. There needs to be no conflict today. Let me see to these dead, and you go back to your realm. No, insect, I will not. You seek no oh, conflict for your pair of weapons of war. Why are you even here, priest? This is not one of your temples. The only growled these last words, holding his club out in front of him. Peace for the dead and all things brings me here. These are not weapons, but tools. I seek no war with you. The weird and wonderful fall apart, even as we natter at each other. The realms are fade, eating. His magic fails, and the Kami he abandoned their temples. For this, you fight. Leave off. The Kami has not abandoned this place, and I will not abandon my congregation. These two worms, the only indicated dead at his feet. You don't smell as if you're from the area. These are not your congregation, priest. All the people of Japan are my congregation. Hitu Ogashu Garashime. Murder? Why are two more dead? Humans fill these land and a thousand thousand times their number since the rank and of Nobunaga. They scour the seas dry of light. They burn and harsh chemicals in the air and heap their landfills with great refuse. Their lives are disposable. Enough words, Oni. Step away. Snarling, the Oni rushed toward the length, rushed forward the length of the small courtyard and swung his club at Kaito's torso. Slipping under the sweep of the club, Kaito leapt backwards to gain some distance. The Oni slashed out one clawed hand and partially collapsed the aging roof. Kaito took Oak could feel the building struggling to stay upright, so he slid to the edge of the tiles and lowered himself to the paved stones in a smooth motion. His knees complained at the impact of his landing, but he kept his footing. The Oni snarled and charged at him again, swinging his club down towards his head. Kaito swept steps to his side, letting the rough iron implement slide past him, and excited Shikujo so that the tip wrapped in the Ofuda glanced against the oncoming weapon. A bell sounded in the courtyard. There was a flash of light, and the great iron war club of the Oni rebounded so it had struck a boulder. The Oni stepped back and, and shook out his hands, one after the other. That hurt, priest. You've learned new things since I saw you last. Let your ear remind you of my name. Shuck, your name holds so interest to me. I mean no offense, but I do not care to know you. 
Despite your familiarity, I will not warn you, you again. Leave this realm and le let me care for the dead. I'll save your corpse for my midnight meal. The owner left into the, the air, bringing his great club down towards Kaito, who dashed his side and swung his shakujo. The club crushed the paved stones Kaito had stood upon, but shakujo struck the only left shin as it landed, producing a loud crunch as another flash of light erupted from the Ofuda rock tip. The Oni grunted in pain, dropping the club and clutching it at his left leg. Kaido advanced on the moaning giant, who reached for his club as he saw the priest approach. Kaito loudly announced like Otodama, infusing his will and that of the Amitabha into the sound, and the courtyard was filled with a celestial ringing. A force impacted the club, causing the heavy weapon to skitter across the paved stones and out of the Oni's reach. A great pain sought. I escaped the hideous tusk's mouth. When magic fails, the realms will empty and we'll all die, priests. All the yokai and children of the dark places will shrivel. Your warriors will lose their meaning and those triumphs will be so much paper. What purpose will you serve then, Onikari? Instead of answering, Kaito darted it forward and struck the giant in the forehead with an open, open palm, attaching the other Afuda to its flesh. Another bell chimed in the courtyard long and clear. The only wail that smoke poured from his mouth and a bright white light consumed his form. When the light dimmed, there was nothing but scorch marks on the paved stones. The club wavered in the afternoon light, like heat simmering on desert sands, and an it too faded from the physical plane. Kaito noted the mist clearing as the Oni's influence faded. He took a deep breath, shaking with adrenaline. He touched your food erupt along the tip of the Shakujo and it crumbled into dust. Its potency spent. He leaned on the staff, catching his breath. He approached the two dead, wondering what had brought them to his place. He turned to the desecrated shrine and bowed, whispering a prayer of a thanks to the kami whose house it had been. If I had time, I would repair the damage to your house, honored one. But appears as if we have company. He turned his head to the corner of the temple building the only had damaged and called, Well, come out if you want to talk. A young woman in covered body art. Mary stepped through a gap in the ruined fence just past the a temple building. He carried an ass she carried an assault rifle, and a pistol was holstered at her belt. As she held the assault rifle in her hands, she did not raise it in his direction. Who are you and what do you want? He continued in Japanese. I am Fumiko Tanaka. I represent the Foundation, he interrupted in accident but competent English. Your Japanese is terrible, Tanaka-san. What do you want? Her eyes widened a bit. You know about the Foundation? Yes. Jailers don't have a strong presence in these lands, but obvious if one pays attention. However, that does not explain what you are doing here. You could have been killed. Jailers? So it's true, you're or with the hand? The agent shook her head as she said this, approaching his position. She continued to hold the rifle in a low ready stance. I'm familiar with the hand, and they've offered support in the past. But you would try even the Buddha's patience with your evasion. Answer my question. He took a step forward and looked into her eyes, which continued to pan around the courtyard. I've been sent to assess your effectiveness in helping with a vital mission. Kaito said nothing for a moment, then laughed. I don't work with your organization. You would have captured the Oni, studied it, and, having no effective measures against it, would have allowed it, its eventual escape to plague more of the people here. That was an Oni? Yes, or Ogre, as you would call it in English. I may be American, Iguchi-san, but I have heard of the Oni, and you'd be surprised at our capabilities. Kaito held up his hand as to show he meant no harm. Well, that is neither relevant nor interesting to me. I've already told you, I don't work with your organization. She let the assault rifle hang from her shoulder by the strap. There is a situation we've come across that could use your expertise if you'll let me explain. Feel free, Agent Tanaka. She spoke for several minutes. And when she was done, he sighed. He turned his back to her for the first time. Well, then I guess I will come with you. But first, I attend to the dead. You have transportation? She nodded. Hello is in the area. Good. He began straightening the bodies so that they lay as serenely as they could. Having 
having seen such a violent end. He recited another sutra and cleaned the blood from their faces. When he was done, he turned back to her. Call your helicopter. We must hurry to Ine. <sighs> and that was uh, the first part of the Path of the Cleric. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. We're going to continue this tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!